Hello everyone. This video is going to be going over my method and settings for etching on glass using an Atomstack A5 M50 Pro diode laser and a honeycomb bed. Uh, the glass we're going to be using is a 1.6 millimeter 4x6 uh, frame replacement glass sheet that I got on Amazon. I'll have the link below. It's not an affiliate link, it's just to let you know what I got. And before we go into the actual project settings, I want to show here my material test sheet that I did on the first piece to try to narrow in the settings. Um, I've got it right now, I've got it set on top of the black cardstock I use for the actual etching and engraving to make it very clear, uh, the image and everything like that. And what you'll see here is at the bottom, I have the rows and columns, and these are my material testers. There's actually five columns, but that first column didn't show up at all. It completely uh, washed out when I cleaned it off. And you'll see exactly the different power and speed settings that are for each column. But this is why it's really important to do a material tester as you're going through on a new laser or a new material. Uh, it lets you kind of dial in to see the exact speed and power that's going to give you that look that you're wanting based upon the amount of opacity you want and the level of detail and everything you want on there. So for me, as I was going through here, I really liked this second row here. Um, and I liked either the fourth or the fifth column. The wolf here I did first is done at that fifth power. Uh, it's got a few cracks and pops. You can't really see it in this video, but there are a couple cracks and pops around the places where it's uh, a lot of that darker engraving or etching on there. So I'm gonna go into the photo imaging settings here in a moment. I'm gonna be going to a slightly lower power and kind of going down to the second column there or fourth column as we go through there. But this is what it kind of looks like. Again, it's just a sheet of glass. It is real glass um, for using in a photo frame rather than the acrylic. And so the settings are considerably different to get the quality output. But you can see here, we still get a really nice look for the etching and engraving. Um, similarly to the acrylic, uh, it's very smooth on the top here because the engraving and the etching happens on the bottom, on the back side of it. So it's actually, this is where the roughness is for it. That's only really important if you're using an image that's gonna look very different if it's inverted because you want to make sure that you invert that image when you do your etching and engraving so that it shows up when you place it correctly into your photo frame. So with that out of the way, we'll go ahead and dive straight into the light burn settings to show you how everything's set up. And then we'll go through the laser and come back at the end and I'll show you the finished product versus the sample to give you an idea of what the different power settings look like with it. So now that we've kind of seen the material tester results and a sample image I did on there, I'm going to go through and show you the way to set this all up in Lightburn. The first thing I'm going to do before I actually start with the real project, though, is I'm going to go ahead and reload that material tester to show exactly how that all got set up. So we'll go ahead and load that in there. I'll zoom into the material area. What I did here is, again, this is a manual tester like I did in one of my earlier videos. Um, I did it this way rather than using the automated tool that Lightburn provides because I wanted a little more fine-grained control over all the power and speed settings and everything. So what you notice I've done here is each row is an increment of speed. So I started at 750 on this bottom row, then up to 4,000 on the top row, and these are millimeters per minute. Each row is set to the full 100% power. And then what you do to kind of customize that is for each column, you select it and go to the shape properties and you can tweak that power scale there to control the power outage for a specific column. So that allowed me to do a 10, 30, 50, 70, and 100%. And that way when I'm doing the material tester, I can use that grid that showed up on there to get the exact dialed in numbers that I really want to use with it. Um, when I showed that, the one I really liked is the second row here in the fourth column, which is going to be that 1250 speed. And if I go to the shape properties, we'll see here that 75% power scale. There wasn't too much difference between the slower speed and the 750 and the 1250, but it is considerably faster as it's going through it, uh, which is going to help with the time to do the etching and the engraving. Uh, I did that wolf on the other one here at the 100% power. I did it 1250-100 on that sample sheet I showed. So I'm going to be doing this one at the 1250-75 because what I noticed at the 100% is similarly to with the acrylic, there were some little flecks or cracks, kind of pops on the glass. 
and I, I want to try to avoid that if possible. So I'm going to try doing that that this slightly lower power because it's still going to give me that opaqueness that I really want with it. These power and speeds and everything like that, they are going to be different for every laser and every different type of material. So it's really important that you can use these settings that I use as a reference point to kind of help starting points for everything. But you're going to want to run through a material tester on your own laser and your own materials wherever you buy the glass to make sure that it's going to give you that exact output that you want for your finished result. One other thing I do want to call out before starting the project is it's always important when you're ever you're doing anything on the laser to always have eye protection. The diode lasers are putting out very bright laser lights, which can hurt your vision uh, when it reflects up into it. And that's especially important when you're doing with glass. Because here in a moment, I'm going to be showing you, I'll be doing a sped up video recording of the actual engraving process. And what you'll notice is with glass, even more so than acrylic or any other material, the laser is refracted a huge amount so the light scatters all over the place and so if you're in the room watching your laser as you go through and you don't have that eye protection on uh, you're running a, a serious risk of hurting your vision as you're going through it now that the disclaimer about doing your own material tester and the safety warning are out of the way we'll go ahead and get started on the actual project itself to show you what i'm going to do here and i'm going to do redo that same wolf that i did in the sample before so we're going to do a file new and then I'm going to go ahead and import an image here. And the image I'm importing here was a black and white wolf's head that I inverted in my image editing tool. Uh, the reason for the inversion here is because as you saw on the sample sheet, whatever it etches at a higher power becomes more opaque. So I want the black to be those opaque parts in there to allow that wolf to really pop on there. And you wanna do that with pretty much any image you're doing is you wanna make sure you invert it so that you can see the details in that area that you're going. The glass we're gonna be doing this on is the same as I showed on that sample glass earlier. It is a four by six sheet of 1.6 millimeter thickness photo frame replacement glass. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and change the dimensions here to shrink the wolf down a little bit. Go ahead and zoom in down in there and then always save your settings to a library once you find out exactly what it is you want to save them in here with the details of what you're doing that way it's very easy to restore them as you're going through here so for this one you'll notice again if i go in here i've got it saved at the 1250 millimeters per minute speed the 75 percent max power which would be on the black areas and then the 0% power, so it's not running at all when it's going over the white to allow them to be completely transparent. I left the line interval at the 0.1 and the 254 DPI. And the image mode, similarly to how I did on the acrylic, I'm leaving that at grayscale. Uh, these are the settings that, beyond that material tester for your speed and power, you're going to want to uh, adjust your line interval and DPI, as well as the image mode, based upon your specific laser, as well as what images tools you use for editing everything. Uh, there's a lot of tools that are online that you can use that will create specific images for engraving and etching. And a lot of those, you can just set them as pass through. because so you don't need light burn to reprocess them. You just want to send it through exactly as it was created by that tool, since it was made specifically for the etching and engraving on there. So with that, I'll go ahead and hit OK. If I go to the preview here, we can see that this is going to take about 23 minutes at that 1250 millimeter per minute speed. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into the engraving process. Uh, it will be sped up, but there's a bookmark so you can jump right past it if you want to get straight to the end results, kind of see the before and after with the original one and then this one at a slightly different speed and power settings. Okay, so before I actually dive into the video doing the engraving, I want to go ahead and take a moment just to show you how I set this up to make sure there's no confusion on anything. So as you can see here, I've got my honeycomb bed. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down the piece of the cardstock. Then I will take my glass sheet and lay it on top of there. Now for spacing the laser itself, I'm going to take this, which is that two millimeter sheet that came with the laser. We'll set it there, move the laser up lower it down until it touches that, and then lock it in. And then we'll remove the plexiglass, the two millimeter spacer. 
So now we are focused the laser at that two millimeters above the top of the glass. And so when we run it through, it's gonna give me that image that I'm looking for on there. So with that, we'll go ahead and dive right in. I'll go ahead and let it run through the actual recording of doing the engraving process. And then we'll come back together at the end With the engraving finished, I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly what everything is going to look like when you first pull it off of the laser bed, and then you can see the before and after between the cleaning. So we'll go ahead and push the laser head out of the way. And what you're going to notice at first is that it's going to be a little bit stuck to the cardstock. And that happens because, as you can see here on the cardstock, the laser actually went through the glass and burned into the cardstock itself. And then here you can see there's a little bit of a haze. It's because the cardstock itself melted onto the glass a little bit, and that's on the back side of there. So what I'm gonna do is I will take this downstairs and I will just rinse it off with a little bit of soapy water and a lint-free cloth, and then we'll kind of come back to the final product and you can see how everything turns out after it gets cleaned up. This is that same sheet you just saw me pull off the laser bed. I took it down to my sink and all I washed it off with was a little bit of dish soap and a lint-free rag to dry it all off and get it cleaned up. And you can see it comes out looking very, very clean. I really like the way that image looks on everything. Um, at the slightly lower 75% power, there aren't any pops or cracks in it. So I really like the way this came out. So I think that's the speed and power that I'm going to recommend is at 1250 speed and the 75% power. Um, what you'll notice is there's not really a lot of difference between that 100% power and the 75% power there. Uh, it's, you still get that same level of opacity. You still get a lot of crispness in the lines, but it didn't have the cracking and popping. So I don't have to worry if I'm doing a bigger image about it running too hot or too long or too slow in that speed and causing it to crack or ruin the glass in any way. So there you have it. Again, this is an Atom Stack A5 M50 Pro 5.5 watt diode laser etching on 1.6 millimeter glass sheets at 1250 speed millimeters per minute and 75% max power. Good luck to you all you with your etching and engraving out there.